G'day people, if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, press that button and uh, give us the uh, thumbs up and the like and uh, it'll give me a bit of encouragement. Thank you. See ya. Yeah, here we go. Um, working on this, uh, the paddle boat, the one that I was doing the other day. I'm going to give it a bit of a, give it a half hour, half hour and see where we can go with it. <coughs> It'll take a little while to do this one. Like I say, they don't take five minutes. Um, you know, they're bloody... I'm just going to wipe a little bit of more dark area back in the where the trees are and leave the paddle boat alone I won't touch the paddle boat at the moment and, uh, so I get a bit of a mixture of ultramarine blue magenta and a little bit of raw sienna or something something just dark warm and coolish sort of thing in the background um, so I just mould that around in there because when you look over the other side there you can see in between the trees you can see some dark shadows values whatever you want to call them and um, so I just try to create that and uh, and of course when you put in your first your first dark colors and things like that uh, it dries a bit light and um, so you know it gives you an eye it gives you the chance to you uh, darken your values give you some, your values a bit more life dark values whatever you want to call them you know not the greatest with scientific bloody or you know artistic talk i just know what i do i just do it play it play with my emotions <coughs> i like painting paddle boats they're uh you know fascinating uh, little thing and um and certainly a big thing in the tourist town like Echuca, the Echuca Moama. <coughs> Moama's the town on the other side of New South Wales and uh, Echuca's on the on the south side of the uh, border of the Murray River. And um, yeah, I just mould it around, just uh, no big fuss where it, uh, you know, it's just like I say, it's just that feeling, just moving a bit of paint around, and, uh, and, and like nothing is finished. You got to remember that. Yeah, you know, nothing is finished. We're, it's just working in a, a process, working towards finishing the painting. Um, so it's just a matter of getting a few colours in there. Um, like I say, the cluster of colours in when you're getting a bit closer to the end there sort of brings it alive a little bit but basically at the moment like the first coat was just getting that structure the plan of where I'm going in the colour composition and now I'm just going I'm working towards that again you know just a little bit of texture a little bit of moulding a little bit of soft edge uh, I'll soft edge these and um, so they don't want them sticking out too harsh uh, at this stage and then I can build a bit of the tree over and put a few put a few branches in there uh, uh, trees and that they're only saplings they're not big trees here uh, you know there's a few big red gums along the Murray but uh, lots of you know just this particular painting won't be having any giant bloody uh, red gums, the ones in the in the foreground on each side, uh, they're fairly old ones, but they're not, you know, they're not that old. Um, a lot of dead trees and things like that over the other side of the river, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna emphasise that too much, you know. I'm just gonna put a few in there, and that's marvellous how. The paddle boat comes alive on the river once you've built the landscape up and you start to work on the paddle boat it really really does come alive you know and uh these particular painting this painting here 
the ideas come from where I actually get out there and sell at times. Um, and uh, I'm just about ready to go and make a few frames down there in Vic Park, see what happens. Get my tools and that ready and uh, that. Yeah, look, just soft edging it, just uh, just pulling the paint around a little bit. Um, and not, not panicking too much at this stage. You know, like there's still a lot of freedom here, just moving stuff around. Um, yeah, so... Well, I hope that's not too loud, but that music because I've already well, I had to cut it down it was just far too loud on the on the thing you couldn't even hear my voice uh, uh, yeah anyhow yeah I've had, I've had to get into this one it's been sitting in the cupboard sitting over there on the shelf a couple of days uh, you've seen the other part the photo wasn't that crash hot I'm not going to adjust the colour on here because, um, yeah, I ran it on TV the other night and it didn't look like it looked a bit too rich. This is this is where it is. Uh, the, the lights actually shine a little bit too much on that oil painting at the top, yeah, which is taking away a bit of the colour light. But when I look at the painting, it's it's where the colours are where where they are really in the in the picture. So I just try to break a bit of light in there. I shouldn't have put too much white in there, but I'm just trying to break that. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a bit of uh, lemon yellow, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of everything in there, just to sort of give it that light life. And uh, you know, so yeah. Yeah, now the Murray sort of, uh, it has got that uh, that greeny look to it because there's a lot of mud, a lot of mud coming down the river, you know. You can only see about five, five, six feet through the water, really on the edge. And uh, then it gets a bit muddy. And that's that's the rivers they are in Australia, muddy rivers, you know. So probably all over the world, isn't it? Yeah, for that Start putting a bit of the bank in across the on the other side there, trying to get a bit of a line going through there. Uh, I'm just throwing a little bit of colour in the water. I've gone a little bit too fast there now, see that? Just gone that little bit too much. But anyhow, it, that's nothing because, like I say, Everything can be worked over at this stage. It's not too too thick, you know. The only thing that's got a little bit of thick paint is where the foliage and that is on the other side, but it's not much. I've just got a a, a mild sort of texture, so that when I'm working my next paint over that, I can uh, with a spatula, you know, it's it's nice when you got that bit of hard paint and the whole pile of textures in amongst all the trees here. You, you know you can you can use that spatula and um, you got a little bit more control with the spatula. Put it this way when you when you can touch and slide and move things around over a little rough surface. Um, but, uh, <sighs> Just molding the colour around a bit at this stage, just soften some of the edges and um, there. I'm 
on that sort of reflection that water and that I know it's a little bit of a white and, uh, don't get too fussed with it got a little bit too much there but look you can wipe it out I can wipe it off because the paint's harder dry underneath touch dry I can just I could use a rag and wipe it off totally if I wanted to and that's the same thing as even putting a bird in here or there you know like at the end of it you know you can whack a magpie in there if you don't like it if you've got dry paint you can wipe it off you know um, you know nothing's set in bloody concrete with painting and, and especially with uh, oil paints you've got that freedom to scratch and go over and whatever you know um, oil paints a little bit different uh, water colors a little bit different and uh, oh, I love the texture I love the texture really I love working with the textured side of it and, um, yeah you know buddy I think I think the more you the more you uh, go in and uh, muck up, uh, the more you um, sort of mold your paint around and go over it two or three times the better looking it becomes you know buddy because you've got all those clusters of colors working with your painting you know so you know i mean you know when you look at this uh in some of the photos and that that are there you could see that you know you'd be you just put if you just put green trees in there certain times of night or day with the light you know it's just a green uh, like a uh, you know a lot of values of different types of greens but just a bit greeny and uh, oh that's how i feel as a painter so you know we have our we have our flexibility in what we do with our color you know to build up our painting and um it's just a very interesting very interesting um you know work you know painting and um no i never get bored you know it takes me to places you know that i enjoy being you know and um and the satisfaction of that and then the satisfaction to of making a few bob out of your painting too if you want but it's not the money's not the the main aim the main aim is it's a way of life like i'm always saying and i'll keep saying it you know um you know, I mean, I could put this painting down and come back to it in another 12 months, you know. So, but I never do. I sort of, I sort of, you know, I do my paintings. If I get a bit stuck on them or a little bit unhappy with them at the stage, I can put them down and, you know, but generally in a few days' time, I'm back in there doing it. Unless they're big paintings. Um, and the, the bigger paintings, I don't want to ruin them. You know, I want to keep want to keep working on so when i go back in i really need to be in the mood to go back into them I, i'm not one that i couldn't go and live you know go and sit painting for galleries and stuff like that uh and doing something for somebody else because it's just it's just a way of life for me and i love to do it my way still like to do it my way but i mean you know it's not my way if you know what i mean um you know so if you've been painting long enough you you sort of tend to get your own styles and own ways of doing things you know and if you've been painting for a long time then you learn to there is a lot of ways of going and doing a painting you know and each one of them will uh, make the painting different in style you know different in style and color and everything you know like painting in monochrome you know these boards have been tinted i think i had yellow on this board only a very faint only a very faint yellow just to just to take the take the brightness of that white you know and um so when you're looking at the painting you could probably see how the brains followed the colors you know um that's quite interesting really you know so 
Yeah, it's how you use the paint, and what colours you use, and you know the amount of colours you use. I mean, you know, you can use two or three colours to do. A, you can do one colour paint, monochrome, you know, uh, which I do to wash in sometimes using uh, raw sienna or uh, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and I, I'll use them in acrylic uh, and that, and uh, do the painting that way. This one, I've done a petrol sketch of the. The Emmy Lou, and um, and a, just a couple of simple lines where the tree was going and uh, where the banks were, and then I started to wash the colour in, you know, and um, yeah, so yeah. <sighs> got that yawn feeling about things. Yeah, I start putting a few branches in too. And um, I'm using one of those, uh, the pointed one, sable, and that can give me a little nice fine brush, brush stroke over the top of the wet paint. But like I was saying the other day, you got to keep that, keep a bit of paint on your on your brush because otherwise it won't come off, and you'll be playing with it, going nowhere. That's and it's one of one of the important parts of painting. Is knowing the amount of paint that on your brushes, you know, and the thickness of the paint too. You know, I mean, sometimes when you want to do a little tint, you might need a little cluster of white with another touch of another colour to actually make that part of the painting stand out. You know, uh, and you know, if you've got sloppy white or something like that, or a cheapy white, you won't get that that quality. You know. So, um, but I also use a stick to, to do my branches too especially over this paint because at the moment it's all wet up in the bushes there and um, you know so I'm just playing around getting a bit of a structure of things and I swear to god there ain't no picture I'm going off I'm just going on I'm just bringing it alive with my own imagination you know I'm not complicating in any shape or form now, I mean, the, 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 the picture was a picture of the Emmy Lou and a tree on the left hand side. Um, there was no other trees here. I've just put these in there to, uh, because I know what the area is like where I go down there and paint. And um, you're always looking for a few trees when the paddle boats come around. If you look to the right hand side of this on the river and go down the river, you'll find that the new bridge is about. 200 yards down, they've built a massive new bridge going over the border of Echuca to New South Wales, cost 300 million or something, and uh, uh, and it's looking looking really good, it's nice and clean and tidy down there now, not quite as muddy, you drive your car down there, I'll get down there and do a bit of painting, and, um, and make my frames and that during the warmer months, it's, it's getting a bit cold here at the moment. Practice near on snow and in the mountains, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Yeah, so you can see how that dark, the darkness in amongst the trees sort of pushes it back a bit, you know, and puts it over there where it is, you know. But I'll get some fine tints of uh, Aussie gold or, or um, what do you call it, sap green or something like that, and really, really tint it up just to touch some little spots here and there. And I, I would imagine some of those trunks will go will change a little bit in colour as I go along. There'll probably be a few more bushes, um, twigs and dead trees lying on the bank. Uh, and then I'll come back across, do the gum trees and uh, bring them out, get them standing out a bit and uh, and then I'll do the, I don't know whether I'll put, I'll put a little bit of foliage here but I'll get back into the paddle boat. And uh, now that can take an hour or so. Later, hour, 
Se tu é... Meu amigo, que hora boa, hein? Tá, drai. I think it'll really be coming together when I put it in the next half hour. I think it'll it will come together. I think the other segment was about 40 minutes, but you could hardly see any. Sorry about that. It was just shitty photo. I don't know what I've done there. I've got me other other part of camera, to, yeah, better camera to um, take those photos. And I thought I'd lost this actually. Just spent half an hour doing me work on there and then I lost it. And, uh, but it's come up. I think the uh, CD card or whatever it is needs to be cleaned. Get rid of some of the stuff on it. Otherwise, they start playing tricks on you. Yeah, so. You know, the idea too is, you know, is not to get frightened. As soon as we get a bit of fear in us and get frightened, <coughs> it slows us down and stops us from painting. In fact, that's what happens to people that do it, start a bit of painting but give it away. It's not a matter of uh, fear, fear, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's getting in there in the unknown and not knowing where to go. You know, when you find that road and you find a few uh, ways of um, handling that, you know, um, then you can uh, you can enjoy doing your painting, you know. Uh you know, but but I but the way I way, way I work with my paintings is is you know maybe two or three sittings. Uh, I love a little bit of dry paint underneath. Not always, but most of the time I do. <coughs> and um, so I can get that chance to think about my painting, and um, and play around with it a little bit, you know, and bring it up. But um. Yeah, so yeah, it was a bit of mucking around, you know, when people ask you, oh, how long does it take to do your painting, you know, I mean, it takes as long as what it does, and, you know, so, you know, they just get worried you might be making too much money or something, you know, it's, um, I think so, uh, you know, it's just crazy, you know, whether something takes you an hour or a day or two days or whatever it does, you know, at the end of the day, they go to work and they get their 20 or 30 bucks an hour, you know, and, um, you know, I always look for a day's pay with a painting, unless it's a big painting, of course, you know. And, you know, in the building going there, you go some um, couple hundred bucks, you know, two or three hundred bucks, so I'm both, most of them are basic paintings are around that, smaller ones, 150, um, 150, 60 bucks. But uh, I, I don't even know whether you're allowed to even say that on YouTube. But I mean, I'm not trying to sell on YouTube. I'm just trying to give some information out there to get people interested in, uh, you know, doing a doing a bit of painting and that. You know, that's a you know also trying to get people interested in the fact that it's a way of life. Painting's a way of life. It's not just a money-making uh, thing. And I don't know if I had to do this full painting full time and wrap up paintings and have them sent back, and uh, you know, it would play with my emotions. And I'll share a little bit with you. I don't even go in exhibitions because it plays with my emotions. You know, I've seen some really good artists go in in exhibitions, and they don't even get a mention. Someone else does some funny painting that you know. It's probably a good painting in its own right, but you know they don't uh, they don't go and get anywhere. So you know it all depends on who's taken, <coughs> who knows who, and uh, who's taken the um, thing, the exhibition. Because I, I will not have that play around with my emotions. I don't I don't I don't want to be the best painter. I don't want to win, and be called. Uh, you know I know what win does. Wing gives you gives you the open door to more names, gets your name out there, and you make more money. Well, yeah, I love money too, but at the end of the day, painting's more important to me. 
as part of my life it keeps me alive like i've mentioned as far as depression and things like that go i've suffered with it all my life you know and and i know lots of other people have too but i mean this is it's, this is not an escape it's it's just a way of uh making my life uh, uh what would you say um you know just it's just the icing on the cake for my life it sort of makes me it gives me that good feeling you know and um so yeah i'm not wiping in this waddle get a little bit of sirloin blue and a little bit of uh sap green i'm thinking that may be the the secret to that waddle too you know sometimes rather than just the bluey type all the time is i think the sap green's got a bit of the green in it and like i say i'm doing this painting with you i've been doing this for a little while with on, on youtube and um yeah you know, I'm, I'm learning here too while i'm doing this you know my paintings will change over a period of time again it's just uh because you're playing around with color more regularly and um and uh yeah it's such a buddy such a good feeling you know yeah i'll keep away that blue i know that, that i don't want to get too too uh gray and and uh stuff i think that side the other side is going to come along real nice real fine but i reckon it'll be in the next in the in the next half hour one uh segment um you know it uh i think it'll be yeah, certainly be in the next half hour little bring it along and just see how you put a little bit of white bit of tint in these these trees in the foreground and how much it pulls these forward you know it's bloody incredible really uh, yeah. uh, well just looking at this this part of this part of this section's just about over there's another wipe in there lighten that light those light colors in there and um yeah these trees are on the side of the bank and uh they're on the side of the bank so they're dipped down and the down on the side and like i say the other day there's about 20 or 30 meters or feet of more more water over the edge of that bank so um yeah, I should have a picture here of this paddle boat if I can while I'm doing this painting um, You know, I'll when I'm when I'm down the river having break or something like that, I'll see the Emmy Lou coming across I'll uh, I'll take a few photos of it. We'll take a bit of a movie of it coming up the river show you uh, where I live and um, And just uh, yeah, how peaceful it is with the old Emmy Lou or the Pivency or the Adelaide, the Canberra, the oh, you know, it just goes on. There's a lot of lot of paddle boats around in Echuca, and uh, and I've painted most of them. So anyhow, this is just about finished, and we've got to leave it right where that is. So you have a